This is smithy.tv. Hey, it's Kenny Robinson. This is Breaking Down the News. Thank you for coming back. If you're coming here, uh, if you're returning, if you're here for the very first time, uh, I hope you become addicted to what I'm trying to do here. Um, today, I got a very special guest. I got uh, I got my best buddy in the business, and uh, you know, you've heard of Butch and Sundance and Willie and Waylon. Well, in the in the past, what five, ten years, I'd say that Darren and I. Uh, have become that in the Canadian uh, comedy scene. Uh, we go uh, sometimes by the name of Rank and Vile. Uh, people ask us which one's Rank, which one's Vile, and I says whichever goes on first. <laughs> uh, uh, we actually wanted to be called uh, Double uh, Double Penetration, but uh, the, the 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 bars and the clothes, the, the bars and the clothes, the bars and and the clubs and even the shitholes just didn't want to put up on their sign Double Penetration. Just imagine the poster though. The poster would have been worth being called Double Penetration. And the customers that would have brought it. Oh, so you know those customers drink a lot of uh, booze and eat chicken wings. That's our market right there. Well, I don't Double know. Double Penetration, chicken and uh, beer. That's it. That's it for the sloths that never get off the couch. That's right. You know. So how's world treating you today? Uh, Things are good. I wish I was here two weeks ago and we could talk for an hour about fucker right in the pussy. That's uh, that was crazy. Well, we could talk about that forever, you know, because <laughs> because there will always be some young boy who's getting the facts of life from his father or yes. his grandfather, and he's gonna say, "Well, how do I make love to a girl, Daddy?" And yeah, he's like, "You fucker right in the pussy." That's right. You know. So. <laughs> My whole thing about that is all these people were very upset with it. They said it was sexist and it was wrong against women. But the joke, uh, the, the the intent of the joke is it's not about the sex of the person, the reporter, because it had been done to male reporters too. Mm -hmm. I just think what they should have done, if it was a male reporter, uh, then you say fuck her right in the pussy, and if it was a female p a reporter, then you say uh, fuck him right in his cock eye. That's what I think it should have been. Oh, well, see, uh, I, I, I almost agree with you with half of it. I thought if it was a male reporter, then you yell, fuck him right in his asshole. But then that would have been homo. Would that have been homophobic? I don't know. Cockeye. Cockeye. That's the. Oh, believe me. You shove something in there, that's going to hurt more than in your asshole. Oh, I've had it done. Yeah. Uh, once, uh, well, once, uh, a couple of times after giving my old hip card. <laughs> right. And uh, if that doesn't make, uh, if that doesn't make your loose tooth come undone. Yeah. You know, and, and usually when you first start dating girls, it's always some woman that thinks it's, it's interesting to put her finger tip of her fingernail in there. Yeah. And you always got to go, hey, 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 hey. Just yeah. what? You don't like this? Go, no, I don't like this. I once got a sliver of soap stuck in there. Oh, and yeah. I was in pain for like a week and a half. I stopped washing my dick after that happened. Yeah. <laughs> so <It's laughs> I like, haven't washed it since. I was so glad when the liquid soap came out. I just tell my wife to gargle with scope, and that's, that's the cleaning that I need. <laughs> She's not going to watch this, so it's fine, right? No, she doesn't even want to look at you over no. breakfast. Why would, she, no. why would she find you on the internet? No. <laughs> That's why she wears something over her face. She's covered. It's not even religious. Not for religious reasons. She just doesn't want to be seen with me. It's a no. bag over her head. Not because I'm offended at her. She's offended by me. And shamed by you. Yeah. You know, in fact, even Muslim women said that, gee, the poor Darren's wife doesn't even have eye slits. <laughs> That's right. He's got he's to at least do her twice to give her holes to breathe, you know? <laughs> Oh, man. So Right out the gate. There we go. I think that sets go. a tone. Yep. You know, and up until now, the lowest point had me been talking about bum beads with, uh, oh. with Martha O'Neill. But oh. uh, I think we just we just took a shovel, smashed it in the head after making it dig its own grave. This is we? my uh, Just for Last Gallo material, so I'm all ready. This is what I'm going to lead off for my next showcase. Well, since I know that Halifax Comedy Festival thinks I'm too dirty, I thought maybe the people behind it might want to check. My manager would be so upset with me right now. Yeah. She's going, the idea was to make, make things happen for you, Kenny, not shoot yourself in the foot. And then I said, well, you wonder why I never go on Twitter. And that's why you have a manager. And my manager says, nothing, because I don't have one. And that's why I'm rogue. Well, And I say whatever I want. Yeah. And, and the, well, the truth for me is, as, as I get older, there's fewer things I really feel the need to say. Yeah, I, I understand that. Up until you know. two years ago, you've told me that before. I never uh, really grasped that. It's But now, because of energy, it's kind of like when you're in your 20s, you hear 50-year-old men talk about, I don't want to have sex anymore. I'd rather have a good meal or yeah. a good, you know, the old joke, a good dump is better than sex or whatever. Yeah. And in your 20s, you're like, that's never going to be me. I'm going to be, oh, man. Oh, I'm I'd always, still rather have I'm pussy always, than a dump. Yeah, but, you know, there's a lot of guys who don't. And, yeah. and I underst I was like, at 20, I'm like, what are you talking about? Now at 44, I'm like, I understand the idea of energy and and 
putting time in and yeah. all that. And sometimes, you know, you just eat a Taco Bell to you help you clean yourself out. But, uh, yeah, I understand the idea of the energy it takes to keep it going isn't still there once you get to a certain age. You know, or sometimes I just think of that old Springsteen uh, line where in down here the poets say nothing at all. They just let it all be. Right. You know, and sometimes I think, well, maybe that's the best way to go with it sometimes, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like perfect example. Lately, there's been some things going down on Facebook, and you know, there's a thousand posts on it and what have you. Right. And then I'll just, I'll not say nothing for about three days. Right. And then I'll just find one picture that I find, and no caption, no, you know, nothing written with it, and just drop it. And then there's like, you know, people are going, wow, and uh, that's well, fucked. And that and summed then, up your opinion on it, whether people go, agree with it or not. Yeah, yeah. but you know, and then, they, then some people even see it differently than my intention. Right. You know, and I go, well, I just, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, you know, so, some, you know, I find just uh, saying less is better sometimes for me, you know. But would you have liked to have in the 70s or 80s had the internet? I mean, that's a big question. People ask me, and I'm oh. not the same generation as you. When I came up, there was a little more, not social media, but ways of getting the word out. Are you glad that you grew up before there was like a, this kind of... Yes and no. Yes, to think about how I could have pushed the name and, right. and more people would have known about it and could have, you know, jumped over an easier run. But also the same uh, spirit of uh, political correctness. Right. And now you said something here tonight and now the rest of the world wants to wants to lynch you for it. Right. Then, you know, I, I still could have been Kenny Robinson, whatever, you know, whatever happened to him or who is he? You know, so I mean, just as easily I could have uh, I could have had a bigger career with the Internet or I could have had whatever I had squished and uh, thrown to the to the side so See, I mean I've recorded hundreds of hours of my sets uh, but I only release what I want to be released you know yeah. when I say the horrible thing that I regret I don't put that on the internet you or know? sometimes you do and then well, then, then people in the business say we can't have you represent. Yeah, he's uncontrollable and yeah I've heard it all yeah but so. I, at the end of the day I control what goes out there as much as to my own ability uh, but I I wonder that kind of innocence if there is such a thing as innocence in show business is even left anymore because everything is so out there you can't do anything you can't a star can't go out and get fucked up get drunk do a bunch of crazy shit and then report to the set the next day no. like nothing's happened you know if they do something fucked up they make it fired now and some people would think that's probably a good thing but i don't i don't well, know they say in the old days the old hollywood you they know pay someone off they and then, kept it quiet how come we didn't know about jfk well we had certain respect for the office back then right you know it's did i really want to know he was doing all those chicks no personally i don't i don't i've always had the idea of i don't care who you sleep with it's not my business if you have a deal with your wife so be it i don't i don't care i think it's a matter also that money doesn't buy what it used to be able to buy like um there's in the, in the there's a there's that great book studs lonigan and there's a scene where a young studs is peeping through the window of a whorehouse. Yeah, right, yeah. And he sees a judge in there with a whore, and he gets home, and his father starts beating him. And he, he says, what are you trying to do, boy? You're trying to take the bread out of your very mouth? And he says, if you ever repeat to somebody what you've seen, because I also saw the movie, he says, if you ever repeat to somebody what you've seen, I'll never get another patent contract with City Hall again. Right. You know, so... Right. Here now, you know, now you got the pictures of the judge, you got the, the whore saying that she didn't want to, she was forced to, you know, they, they, she lit cigarettes on her, then there'll be 25 other whores that were with him before he was a judge. Right. Well, you know, he said he could get my husband off death row if I slept with him, and then, you know, then everything that ever happened would be into it, so... But at the other side of that is then in the real world of news and reporting, if we didn't have social media, a lot of things wouldn't get out there. Right? I mean, so the negative Are we impact... smarter? Do we have any more news? Or do we just have more stuff to chew? Well, I mean, the truth gets out there a lot more. Whether it's a manufactured truth or not, it still gets out there. Yeah. I mean, they just reported that the police just shot a black bear, what, in Mississauga? Uh, right? Richmond some, Hill. Richmond Hill. I mean, yeah. that story wouldn't have gotten out because it's all kind of tagged on to all these things that have happened in the States but in shootings. But in Timmins, they shoot a bear regularly, so it's the big deal. And as people right. say, when you build housing near where bears live, it's going to happen. Sure. It wasn't like, you know, the police just shot a, a T-Rex. What? They couldn't have captured him? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know? put it in a zoo and made money off of it? You know, or why did they have to kill that bear? Couldn't they tranquilize him? Well, the tranquilizer gun was unfortunately uh, stolen at a rave. <laughs> 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 you know, so... It's, uh, it, I am sorry the bear is dead, but I want to know who's getting its fur. Well, I mean, I don't think anything, I don't think Baltimore would have happened the way it did without social media. No, none of this stuff. But what surprised me after the Rodney King thing, you would have thought that all this police abuse would have stopped. 
well, it's never going to stop. No, but you would have thought, like, damn, people got cameras. We can't do this shit anymore. They, they don't even stop themselves when they have cameras on them. Yeah, they, yeah, that's like, true. You they're... Know, like, they're so stupid, some of them. They have a camera on them, and they still think that they're above the law and that everyone's going to see it their way. Or in Detroit, there's a, a camera they've taken from the police station where the cops are uh, high-fiving and mimicking it with each other, how they beat the suspect up yeah. in the cell yeah. while, the cell, while the, the suspect's sitting there handcuffed. Right. So he's going to win that lawsuit, and some cops are losing their job there. So. Right. You or know. they, you know, they pepper spray a pregnant woman, or they do all this crazy stuff. It's, it's at least it's out there, yeah, for us to consume. But the negative effect of that is then there's a lot of social shaming that goes on as well. Right. Like there's that story that happened in I think it was in England a week or two ago about the woman who thought some guy was taking photos of her kids, mm -hmm. but he was actually just taking a selfie of him with Darth Vader. But of course the way you hold the camera, it looks like you're taking a picture forward, but you're actually taking it this way. So she sees him taking a picture this way of her kids. Right? So she takes a photo of him. I don't know if you heard the story. She no. takes a photo of him, puts his picture on the internet, says pretty much that he's a pedophile taking photos of his kids. And then it goes viral. It gets like shared like 80,000 times in less than 24 hours. Oh. Then this guy gets contacted from a friend going, hey, your picture's on the internet being seen as a pedophile. He's got to go to the police station with his phone and justify his own actions that day. Go, no, I was taking a selfie for my kids who love Star Wars, a picture with Darth Vader because it was like a standee thing. I'm not, there's no pictures of her kids on my phone. This is, you know, social media shaming. Take my phone and go through every expert and, and you they got. Did. And yeah. they did. And they found no <laughs> photos of the kids whatsoever. But they did find the Loch Ness, not Loch Ness monster. Right. Or at least a picture of his cock. But, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's like, now where does that go? Does he have the right to sue her? And he probably doesn't have a gig anymore. Well, I mean, well, yeah, the, the well, that's like, there, that. there was like the kid that was known in the in the Toronto comedy community. He uh, he was charged with showing kitty porn to some kids at McDonald's, and meanwhile, it turned out he was showing uh, the Family Guy to his own kids. Right, because he was white, his kids, the kids were not, and it just looked like some kind of creepy dude. Uh, what can a white up. man have a child with a Filipino woman? Well, you know, I <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. still like the guy and talk to the guy, but the idea of social shaming there's there's boundaries that people put people in boxes, and if, if it's outside that box, we have to worry about it. Like this guy now for his life, because if you put his his, his name in, in the Google or whatever, he's gonna be tied to that story for the rest of his life. Just taking a picture of him with Darth Vader. And you know who was trying to get the kids? Darth Vader. <laughs> Yeah. He's the one that said, yeah. join me. Yeah. You know? I am your father. <laughs> this is what fathers do. Anyway, folks, uh, we just run out of time for our uh, for this segment. So this is Darren Frost. I'm Kenny Wright. Well, where are you this week, Darren? Uh, this week I'm at the uh, Toronto downtown, June 3 to 7, on my Darkness Within comedy tour. Darkness Yuck Yucks. Within comedy tour. Yuck comedy Yucks. tour. The Darkness Within. And folks, uh, take it from me. And if you haven't figured that out after the first couple of minutes of this segment, yeah. uh, Darren goes pretty dark, pretty early, and uh, quite often. So if a dark comedy is, uh, is your cup of tea and you don't want any milk or honey in it, then definitely you owe it to yourself and everyone that you love to go see Darren Frost at Yuck Yucks this week. And for those of you that haven't been to a comedy club, it's no longer in a church on Church Street. It's no longer on <laughs> Bay Street. In fact, folks, it ain't even on Eglinton anymore. It's on Richmond Street in the heart of the uh, of the club district, uh, the entertainment district. And don't bother uh, driving in. Uh, there's no parking. So come in a cab or in a subway. And uh, if you can't get a cab, well, uh, in our next segment, we're going to talk about what you can take. So anyway, once again, Kenny Robinson breaking down the news. And uh, thanks for checking us out. You've been broke.